So another thing I wanted to let everybody know is that we're uh, going to start a new thing there where we give away books. You come get a book and then you bring it back so somebody else can read it. The first uh, set we got in is called Whatever Happened to Liberty. It's an Uncle Eric book. It's simple to read. Uh, you could have your kids read it if you wanted to. Anybody that doesn't really understand exactly what we get on here and talk about this is a, a good book to a good starter book, or it's even good for people that have read everything. So come check that out. Come get a free copy and let's start uh, um, exercising our minds a little bit. All right, thank you very much. That's uh, Far North Tactical over there at Eighth and Lacey. Easy to find. Just look for that uh, long cabin. There at the corner of, well, if you go down to Cushman, take a right turn on late on 8th, and you'll find it right there. Can't miss it unless you got your eyes closed, which I really wouldn't recommend if you're the one driving. All right, 458-TALK is the number, and uh, still in the studio with us, we've got Aaron Bennett from Far North Tactical. We've got Dave Giesel from the Fairbanks Campaign for Liberty, and we've got Josh Bennett from Bighorn Enterprises. And the main reason that we're here that all of all four of us are here today is to make sure that we drudge up these really old, musty concepts and talk about absolutely nothing new. Right? No, yeah, that's basically the goal. <laughs> yeah, we never claimed that we just found something out and just invented anything. All right. 458-TALK is the number. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Are you Hi, still? Don. Don, what's on your mind? Um... Yeah, another book for, or story for somebody to read is Dante's Divine Comedy. And it had about those people, like they were talking about, rolling the rock, drifting the hill, take a break, they roll down the bottom, the Lothers. And what it's supposed to be is like the 14 different levels of hell that you go through and stuff. And whatever you did in your life, you're going to do the rest of your life. Well, when I read that, I thought, uh-huh, you get me now, guess what? You have... The idea, I, I have the idea that you're going to suffer now doing the same thing for the rest of your life. And it, 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 it makes it a point. So. All right. Thanks very much for the call. Appreciate it. 458 Talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, what's on your mind? Well, I'd like to say that I think all three guys down there, uh, Dave Giesel, Aaron Bennett, and Joshua Bennett, are doing good uh, with what they do, coming on the radio and, as you called it, dredging up these ancient concepts or, you know, re-enlightening us to these things and reminding us of these of these principles and things. That's very good. But my view is that it takes thousands of people participating in various ways to defend our liberties and keep us free. You know, we've lost some liberties, but we need a constant effort to try to get some of those back and or prevent us from sliding into slavery even more. And when I hear uh, you, David, say that uh, participating in the political process uh, well, somehow kind of bad a little bit uh, because it lends credence to the political system that we have that you don't think is so hot. Now, what I think uh, the situation is is that you may want to concentrate on certain aspects of trying to preserve our freedom, like having this little group that you have and spending a lot of time reading these deep books and, 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 and uh, telling us what you found in those books. And that part is good, very good. But we need thousands of people to help uh, preserve our liberty and like I went to the borough assembly meeting I don't always go there that often but I went there this last time and I saw some people that are there more, much more often than I am like Mike Prax for instance again there and I depend on people like that to when I'm not there to stand up to try to keep the borough at bay and so if you say that you will not participate in the political process that's fine because you're doing your part in kind of other avenues but I would hope that you wouldn't want all of us to depart from the struggle in the various quarters that we like to engage in because, and then let me just ask you this question, do you believe in representative government where we have a constitution and we have a legislature, legislative body in Washington at the borough level and at the state level, or do you believe in no government at all, or what do you believe? Um, well, I, I don't necessarily believe that representative government actually represents uh, anyone in particular because the only there's in America there's 300 million different um, philosophies that's just the way it is and we have overlap like all of us have certain degrees of overlap in our philosophies and so we get into groups and we say oh we're like-minded 
Um, but the 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 more people, I guess, each representative represents, the the less they represent them. So the only person who can actually make the correct decisions about their own life is the individual. And so the market in the last 200 to 300 years has shown remarkably that people do a very efficient job of representing their own views voluntarily when they're allowed to make decisions for themselves using their own resources. And I think that that discovery shows the way forward for how society can be structured. You know, our, our political systems lag behind our market system, um, which isn't even a system. It's just people being free to do what they want. Well, it used to be anyway. It isn't anymore. So, so that's what I would say. But, you know, to your point, uh, yeah, I, I don't think, you know, I'm not, I don't want anybody to do or not do something because I advocate this or that. I want them to go inside their own mind and decide what's important for them and to do the things that they think are the most important for themselves. The, the thing that I worry about with the political system and the reason I don't participate in it is because it's very easy to get wound up thinking that this is the way, right? And maybe, you know, I, I know Mike Prox actually talks about, you know, well, the, the goal of participating in politics is not necessarily to change things, but it's to keep things from, from falling apart as quickly as they would have otherwise. So maybe that's a uh, laudable goal, right? Maybe that's good. Um, and for people who view that as, as valuable and important, you know, that's a great way to do it. You know, what's the right way to fight for liberty? There's no single way to do it. If I were to tell you that this is the only way that, that we can be free, well, then I would be squashing your freedom to express other ways. So okay. that, that would Thank be you. incongruent. It takes, I agree that it takes thousands and thousands of people to fight for our liberty, but I don't necessarily think that it's taking, it's not the thousands and thousands of people going down to the borough. I mean, you said what the problem is in the very beginning. You said, well, we got to go down there to keep them in line. There's the problem. Why do we even have them there? If we have to go down there and keep them in line, we have to bring a mob down, as many people as we can, to keep them in line and make them do what we want. Then why did we send them there? Yeah. Why did we establish them? The thousands and thousands of people need to be getting together individually with each other in the free market and preserving our liberties with ourselves and getting the government out of it once and for all. I mean, push the government out. All the government does is take freedom away. All the government does is impose its philosophies and its regulation on people. And we keep sending them back, and then we say, well, now we got to go down there and straighten them out. That's the problem. Why well, did we send them there? But because we need somebody there to make sure that we keep them from uh, keep people from having homosexual marriage, John. <laughs> oh, I thought we just put no. them there so they could take my property taxes. And don't I mean? Isn't can't, that can't have my neighbors doing what they want with their own property and their own bodies? We can't. We can't allow people to have a junkyard in in in, in an area that's obviously clearly not zoned for a junkyard, John. That's clearly owned by them. And we all, Dave said it right too. We um, everyone's got their own their own route that they do with liberty and all of us we've talked about randy yeah. and we appreciate i mean he is adamantly gets out there and tells people what's going on with uh, unions and uh, the government relationship with unions and stuff and we applaud it yeah I mean, the, the, the key with with you know the danger of political participation is losing sight that our rights are inherent to us as humans yep. right and that the government the government doesn't it it doesn't actually have the power to take away our rights. It can tell us what to do. It can put us in cages, but it can't change the way we think, and they can't change the way we act unless we unless we let them. All right. We are running out of time here quickly, but we've got a question for you from the chat room here. Sam asks, what does preserving liberty mean? Is that a euphemism for do anything I want, everyone else be darned? I Not at all. I mean, yes, do whatever you want, but not everyone else be darned. You're right. Your liberty ends once it wants it. <laughs> Once it comes up with against someone else's liberty, you're stopped. Yeah, Once you start invading someone else's liberty, yours just ended. That's the whole idea of, of property boundaries. That's why private property is, is an inherent uh, aspect of, of liberty in a market society. Thanks for listening, Sam. And uh, thanks, everybody, for being here today. We are at the end of the show. If there's uh, uh, lines are still full. If you didn't get a chance to uh, call in, please send us an email for now. You can send it to my email here at the station, stevefloyd at kfar660.com. And 
you say something interesting, we'll read your letter on the air next week. Patriots Lament, same time, same place, 10 a.m. Saturday morning. Talk radio for the interior. 660 a.m. KFAR Fairbanks.